in part one of my video on the website security service Web Totem that's currently on a lifetime offer over on AppSumo, I took you through my first look at the platform, the basics of the offer, and a look around the interface itself. Now, when you install a tool like Web Totem, you do need to give it some time to scan, learn, and do a few other things on the site. So I've gone ahead, let it do that, and in this follow-up video, I'll go over some of my findings, my impressions of the platform, and if I feel this is something worthwhile placing your trust in. Okay, so we're taking a look at, or follow-up look, to the Web Totem offer over on AppSumo. As you can see, $59 for the first of the lifetime deal offers, which gives you five websites, and you can stack these up to three to get unlimited websites. We can also see that currently, at the time of recording this, there are 21 reviews on this, and it comes at just over four stars, or four tacos. Now, I've set these to be based upon their rating from lowest to highest, so you can kind of see. And what I would suggest is to have a read through some of the positive, the negative, the sort of in the middle kind of thing, to give you an idea, because I'm no security expert when it comes to websites. I'll be the first to hold my hand up there. So you will find there's a bit of a mixed bag here, but you will also find that the developers of Web Totem are quite active in answering most of the comments and questions and feedback and giving updates on what exactly is going on. So I would suggest taking a look at that if you look into sort of buy into this or you just want to find out a bit more about what it's about. But there's the three tiers. I'm not going to go back over these. Already covered these in the initial video, but you can see what you're getting for each of the price plans. So once you've logged in, this is your web totem. So I'm going to hop over to my dashboard and you'll see there's the site that I've got set up currently. Now we can expand this out and we can see some basic overviews and we can also then dig down a little deeper. Again, I covered most of this in the first video. So this is more about going back and taking a look at what we saw in the first video when it didn't really have any information to where we are now, which is about five or six days in to actually gathering some info, scanning, all those kinds of things. Okay, so things are broken down on the left-hand side and also across the top. So you can see we've got monitoring, scanning, scanning, server resources, firewall, and antivirus. Monitoring is going to check for things like your SSL, your uptime monitoring, your reputation to see if you've got any bad links or sites are linking back to you and causing a problem with your reputation. Now, this is a really minimal site. There's pretty much nothing on it. It's a demo site that I've set up. So it's only going to give me some basic information back, but it's at least just checking things like how long I've got left on my SSL. Is it okay? Has my site been up any downtime, any reports of that downtime? So I can check and see if there was a problem at that point. My reputation, so you can see my status is okay. No blacklisted entries, no last test, oh sorry, the last test information. And you can, if you want to dig down a little deeper and we'll take a look at some of those things in a moment. Hop over to scanning, and this is going to check for port scanning, any deface scanners, and also just giving you an overall score of the security of your site. Now, this is giving me notifications of port scanning like it did right back at the beginning, and it tells me what ports it considers to be problematic. So you need to take a look at closing these where applicable, and if you're not really sure what this is for or what these are kind of throwing up, and you, you kind, of, kind of get a little bit of a, a false negative or false positive then I would suggest taking a look at contacting your hosting company, giving them the information and just asking them, can they advise you on the best way to deal with this and let them come back and give you more information because most hosting companies, good hosting companies should be able to help you out with these kinds of issues if you encounter them. You can see my scoring is giving me a 70%. percent i based in the UK, it gives me the IP address the last time it was tested and so on. If we take a look at the server resources. Now, currently this is showing me nothing because like I say, the site is... On shared hosting on SiteGround, it's not really getting any traffic, but you'd find that if you had a more out there site, you know, a lot more information going on, a lot more visitors, a lot more traffic going through it, then you might see some spikes in your CPU load. So it is something to keep an eye on, and it's useful to sort of have that. However, most people are going to be looking for the firewall and the antivirus when it comes to sort of online web security for their website. So if we hop over to the firewall, you can see the first, I think, seven days they recommend that's kind of learning. So the firewall is still learning and what's going on before it becomes more effective. So if we take a look, this gives us a sort of a graph overview of what exactly has happened. And then it'll give you an attack report and the IP address is associated with those attacks and so on. Now, what I'm finding is this actually brings up the IP address for my account. So it pulls me up as being a someone that's trying to do something that I shouldn't, which is just basically accessing the site. So the first reports on this are coming back with information that isn't really any use to me. But again, this is one of those things that longer term, this should be monitoring, finding problems and so on. 
Now, one thing I don't really like too much about this setup is the fact that even though it gives you a lot of information and it tells you things that could be made better, it doesn't really tell you openly and easily how to address those. You know, so if you are someone that's using this, you don't have that much knowledge of website security, and you see these problems popping up, they could cause a little bit of panic, at which point it would be nice to say, well, this is what's happened, and this is how you can take a look at making sure that this is, you know, a problem as opposed to a false positive or a false negative, and then how you could look at rectifying those problems. It's okay to say that there's port problems. What do you do to actually rectify those? How do you deal with those things? So for me, it's a case of this is giving you the info, but not giving you any help on how to solve the problems. And I would say personally, when this is kind of geared at more novice users, that should be something that's an integral part of it is show the problem or potential problem and then tell people how they can look at addressing it. If it just points back to help sections on this site, it would be good to have more information. You can see if we take a look, block hackers, bots, SQL injection, XSS, and so on. So we can say, okay, or we can go to instruction. Now for me, when it comes to instruction, I assume that's going to give me information on how to use this, not how to install it. So this is kind of taking to information that's just about how do you install the antivirus and firewall modules? Well, if you're using uh, WordPress, it's all in, in the plugin anyway. So not really a lot of help. They're not really shedding any light. So I think their documentation really could do with expanding on how this all actually works and giving some information about how to get the most out of it. Same goes for the antivirus. You can see this is going through. This is currently scanned over 6,000 files. There's nothing changed, deleted, or infected showing up inside you. Now, I know this site should be clean because it is a clean install. There's nothing else being installed on there. But you can see this allows us to go through and we can rescan this if we want to and all those kinds of things. So this is kind of the basic overview. If we go into the all stats, this will kind of show us a little bit more information and we can sort of drill down a little bit more if we want to as well. Now, this is telling me that I need to install the agent manager. And if I click on that and go to install agent, I've already installed the WordPress setup. So I'm not really sure why this is telling me to install the agent when the agent is already installed. As you can see, it's gathering information. So again, I could be acting a little silly here, but this isn't really giving me any information. And again, you go to this and it just gives you the same basic information. Plugin for WordPress, well, it's already installed and active. As you can see, hopping back over to the site, into the dashboard, Web Totem is installed. If we go to the firewall, for example, it tells me all the information about the firewall if we go to the antivirus, tells me that's scanned. So it's active and working. You know, the second to the 26th of the second, well, although these are from probably about a week or so ago. So, yeah, there's a few things I think could really do with being tidied up a little bit here because just this install the agent thing, when it's already installed, I just don't get the whole point of that. Unless I'm missing something. And if I am, please do let me know in the comment section below so I can rectify that and look into a little bit more detail. But like I say, you click the install manager, it just says, by clicking the install, you agree to our terms and conditions, blah, blah, blah. And this is gonna start setting up and it's gonna install it for the WP Pro website, which is what I've kind of got on. Install it, go to the store. Well, we go to the store, there's the Web Totem WP, WT Security plugin. And if we hop back over to the website, I can find my website, we can see WT Security is installed. Got the firewall configuration, you can see this allows us to whitelist and blacklist any IPs. So everything is set up correctly as far as I'm aware. So it's kind of frustrating that you're kind of getting this no values, no information coming back, even though you've got what is needed to be installed, installed. So anyway, we'll pass on from that. Okay, so this is giving us the breakdown kind of thing. So if we go to monitoring, for example, we get some more data now. And as you can see, my uptime has been perfectly fine over these past six days since I've had it running. The same with the SSL and the deface, reputation, all those kinds of things inside there. My port scan is coming back. And like I say, it would be just useful to have more information about this. That doesn't tell me anything. Open ports detected, your website is vulnerable to attacks. How do I rectify that? Tell me what I need to do to deal with it. How do I go about looking for those problems? You know, this for me is part of what any website security service needs to be doing is not just reporting the problem, but telling you how to deal with the problem. So on that front, I'm a little bit disappointed. Go to firewall. Again, you can see this is showing me all the info. And if we scroll down, I've checked these IPs and they are actually my IP. 
So this is being kind of flagged up. It's not blocked, so it's not making any problem. But I know that some people have reported problems where they are being blocked, the IP address is being blocked, and they can't log into their own site, which causes an issue. Now, thankfully, they have changed things over now, so you can whitelist and blacklist your own IP, and that's perfectly fine if you're not on a uh, sort of an IP that gets reassigned each time you reboot your router or you get kicked off your internet connection. If you're on a static IP, that wouldn't be a problem. But as you can see, there's a lot all showing up. The IP address that is showing up for me, and all those are pretty much all me, except for these ones, which might have been me before because I rebooted my router. And a couple from Spain and things like that. But nothing's been blocked, so take that for what it's worth, as it were. Okay, antivirus logs. So again, you can see that there's nothing really been flagged up on here because this site should be clean. But we can, if we want to, drill down between scanned, changed, deleted files and infected files. So if you do have a problem, at least you can filter down. And then you can deal with those from here. So what else do we have? You can download, you can rescan, you know, some basic info. Server resources, the site isn't showing anything, but like I said, this allows you to at least check for disk usage, RAM usage, and CPU usage, and you can see any spikes, and then take a look back if there's something you need to rectify from there. Okay, so this is kind of where I am with it at the moment. I've got the score inside of things. And this is what I'm kind of talking about. Website security compliance. It tells me various different things that I'm not doing that well on, like security text. Allows security researchers to easily report security vulnerabilities. The data shown show the presence of the standard on your website. What does that mean? How do you deal with it? You've got to go away and do a lot of research for yourself when they come back up with these things telling you there's potential problems on how you could even look to deal with it. Now, things like secure cookies and things, probably not too difficult to kind of get your head around. But then strict transport security, expect CT. What the hell do most of these things even mean? And how do you deal with getting those to a zero so you can sort any problems out? And the same with the security recommendations. Tell us how to actually use these to set them up correctly. Then we'll get some use out of it. As it is, not a lot of use just telling me these recommendations without any way of rectifying things. Okay, so with those things being said, let's just do a really simple practical test. I'm going to hop over to SiteGround, and this is the site that we currently have set up. Now, as you can see, WebTotem includes a new folder as well as some additional junky looking files. So it does insert some content into your site structure. But other than that, there's nothing else inside there. Now, some of the things that this is going to check for if we go back to our site is you can see we've got antivirus, and that'll check for things like new files that have been added, scanned files, modified, deleted, and infected files. We can also show permission changes. So let's just do something really simple. Let's upload a file directly, and let's also change the permission of something. So we'll take this license TXT file, and we'll just change the permissions on there. So let's just change that, and we'll just check these to be, and check there, and confirm that. So we've changed some permissions. Let's also upload a file. Doesn't really matter what it is, we'll just grab this little image and we'll upload that. Okay, so that's that done. Let's hop back over to our site now and let's just rescan this. Now, that just literally took a split second, so I'm assuming that hasn't carried it out because nothing is showing up here. But no change files, no deleted files, no infected files. Let's just say show permission change, which we know we've just done. Let's rescan that. Still nothing. Now, I've already started a rescan on the main site itself on here. So let's go back into our monitoring, into our antivirus. And from there, you can see this is now scanning. Let's choose for permission changed. And this is probably going to take a while. So I'm going to leave this run in the background and I'll come back once this is finished and we'll see if it's even noticed the fact that I've changed those upload files. Now, it may not work in this way when it comes to changing things via FTP but it's still worth testing out to see if anything shows up because in my opinion, people can have FTP access and they could upload things into the site through FTP, which is something we'd obviously want to be checking for, especially things like permission changed and so on. So let's just let this run, see what comes back with it on this really simple test. Okay, so I've kind of left this running now for probably the best part of an hour or so. And as you can see, we're only scanning 6,000 plus sort of files. There's not a huge amount of files on you. This is a pretty basic minimal site. 
But that's a heck of a long time. And so far, nothing is showing up for any of the permission changed. New files, nothing showing up at all on there. Again, nothing at all. Deleted, nothing. Infected, obviously, I'm not going to get anything on there. Permission changed, nothing. So, so far, I'm a little bit disappointed by A, the speed of this. It's not particularly quick. But also, it doesn't seem to be picking anything up at the moment. Obviously, I'll let the scan finish. There's only a couple of files I changed. From my first impressions with the antivirus log, not that impressed. Now, I also did the rescan inside the dashboard of the WordPress plugin itself. And as you can see, that has finished. And again, if we come in, we say show permission changed, nothing showing up, scanned files, modified files, nothing showing up, even though you saw me change these. And like I say, I could be wrong in the way this is intended to actually display this information because I've logged in via FTP. But like I said earlier on in the video, hackers can log in via FTP. They can get FTP access if they know the details or they can hack through into that side of things. So you could easily change the files. It doesn't necessarily need to be an uploaded file that gets changed. So I'm a little bit dubious as to how effective this is or if there's just something odd about this configuration because when I hit the rescan, if I do it inside the site, it takes like a couple of seconds usually and then sometimes it'll take a lot longer. So let's try it with the rescan and you can see that's basically the time it took to do the rescan. No changes. In all honesty, since I uploaded a new file as well, it's still showing exactly the same number of files we had before I uploaded anything into this. So this should be showing 6,378 files, but it isn't. So let's just give it one more chance in the dashboard of WordPress. Let's come to that file I uploaded. Let's just change the permissions on this. So let's just change these right across the board. We'll set. I'll delete this in a moment anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We'll confirm on that. Oh, okay, I can't do those file permissions. So we'll just confirm, there we go. So we changed the file permissions on there. So we hop back over to the site and we just do a rescan. That should show that we've changed something. Show permission changes, absolutely nothing. So whether this scan isn't completing or something just isn't working correctly, I don't know, but you see modified files, nothing. And now I can't actually get past modified files. There we go. Deleted files, infected files. Absolutely nothing showing up for any of that, and including the scanned files thing isn't changing either. So just in case there are some kind of strange errors going on, I've gone ahead and chosen to reinstall the agents for both the antivirus and the firewall. So I'm going to let those go through their installation. That's going to wipe the data out. We'll have to see then if this actually picks things back up and starts to work as I would assume it was intended to work. So again, I'll let these install. I'll rerun the sort of the checks on this and we'll see what happens. And I'll come back to you when this is all finished. Okay, so after reinstalling, I've given it about 10, 15 minutes, had a pile of errors, had to go ahead and deactivate the plugin, reactivate the plugin, update the plugin. And as you can see, we're still sat here waiting for this to complete the installation, which to me just seems ridiculous. If we come back over to here now, because I've obviously reinstalled those agents and they're not installing correctly or showing up as being installed, I'm just getting a pile of need to install issues. And most of my information is obviously gone because it needs to rerun all those tests. So for me, if I'm totally honest, I don't really think this is ready for prime time just yet. Whether this is the AppSumo effect or something else, I don't really have a huge amount of faith in what's going on right now. It just seems to be a little bit on the clunky side. You don't get any help and support with the things that they sort of throw up to say that you need to rectify these. Like I said earlier on in the video, the ports and so on. Oh, actually, there we go. It now says that we're up to date. So that's taken probably the best part of maybe 15 minutes just to complete that install. Let's hop back over to this section. We'll refresh this now and see if the need to install. Oh. And it says the antivirus still needs to install, even though you can see we've just gone ahead and installed it. So I'm back on the same page now, and it's coming back up as going ahead and trying to install. Yeah, I think my honest answer is maybe if you want something like this, put it in your back pocket for six months, wait for the AppSumo deal to run out and see if things tidy themselves up a little bit. And it starts to become a little bit more user friendly, a bit more usable right now. I'm just thinking there's just a little bit too much in the way of issues going on with just the basics of installing it and getting it working. 
my honest opinion, you pay your money, you take your choice. If you don't mind putting it in the back pocket for a few months, do that. Otherwise, maybe avoid this one right now. As we know, website security is something we all need to be concerned with. And on face value, WebTotem offers a compelling deal on AppSumo. However, my impression of the software and the service is that I just don't really feel it's truly ready for you to place your trust in 100% right now. If you don't mind waiting though, then this may be one to pick up now with an eye on the future to where it can be in 6, 12 or 18 months time. Sadly for me right now, I just don't feel like I have the faith in the tools it offers right now to use this on any mission critical sites. But how do you feel about WebTotem? As I said at the top of this video, I am far from a website security expert. I'm sure many of you viewing this video are in the same boat as me. I feel that while this looks great, the lack of actionable information on the alerts and scoring parameters makes it something that, well, most less savvy users would simply look at and then just move on. As always though, I welcome your comments, finding and feedback in the comments section below. Now question of the day for you, what security tools do you use to secure your website? Drop your answers in the comments section. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far into the video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a click? And while you're at it, if you enjoyed it, why not hit the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't find value in this video, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. Until next time, take care.